So we'll move on. Um, <laughs> a couple of seasons ago, you graced the yellow and black of wasps. Um, so what are your greatest memories of that time, you know, living over in England and playing in the Premiership? It, it was a bit of a tough experience at start because I came over with, uh, with a big injury, coming off a big injury. I came over uh, and had to do rehab by myself. So in a foreign country, new player, um, you know, I, did, I tore my uh, tendon off my patella. So it was a huge injury. And, uh, you know, as a player, there's huge expectations, a lot of, you know, for me, there's a lot of emotions there for me. I was away from family. My girlfriend, now my wife, uh, she was there with me as well. So we kind of, it was a great experience. It was tough at times uh, during the early days. But as we started playing more rugby, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, yeah, a, a really nice experience. Um, but they did sell me, I was, I was at the start that I thought we were living in London. So I'm like, hey, what's this? This <laughs> is going to be great. So the, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great. New high performance centre at London. In London, this is fantastic. No worries. Die young. It's like, yeah, no worries. Sweet. Um, we'll see you over here, bang. All done. Um, about two weeks before, uh, before I got over, they're like, oh, yeah, we've actually moved to Coventry now. Um, so it, all the players have got to move to Coventry and not live in London anymore. So, oh my God. Um, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coventry, London, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Midlands, hey, cheap, uh, yeah. cheaper rent. Yeah, cheaper rent. But um, yeah, that was cool. Um, it was, uh, you know, again, uh, getting the opportunity to play with some world class players. You know, our back line: Dan Robson, Cipriani, Jimmy Gopeth, Elliot Daly, Willie Larue on one wing, Christian Wade on the other, and mm-hmm. I myself was at fullback. Mm-hmm. And he's, it, it, you know, they, these as a player, you, you, you kind of. It's a great experience. You, you learn a lot, like I, I said previously, of, of these guys and such a good vibe around as well. Um, and, and your rugby just becomes really enjoyable. And I suppose, speaking of enjoying yourself, um, what did a typical victory night out with the Wasps boys look like? You know, uh, who was in charge of the socials? Can we, yeah. can we call in Sips? Can we call in Sips? <laughs> <laughs> you, must have like, you must have just got a bus down in Cov or something. You don't tell me. You know, yeah, well, there was times. In Cov, did you? <laughs> Cov. No, well, that was the danger zone. Coventry was the danger, danger zone. But there were there was, there was a few nights where we went up to, uh, where, where was it? To, uh, Birmingham. Yeah, that's where we went. Yeah, Birmingham. That's oh, wow. Birmingham. Birmingham. Do you talk like that? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we had a few cracker nights up there. Bloody hell. Yeah, um, which was quite fun. We went down to London a few times. Um, but uh, we, we kind of, because we're in Coventry, we're actually, a lot of the players were based in Leamington Spa, like a little spa town. Yeah. So that was actually nice. Um, and just kind of, if, if we had an early game, we'd go meet at the pub and have a few beers there, but uh, nothing too silly. <laughs> For our and then you get, and then you get to winking. Paris and it's in bloody lockdown. I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zeebs Zeeb's has been talking it up too. Oh, He's bro, like, I'll take wait. you here. I'll take you there. I'll take you here. Hold on. What was Finn saying when he came on? He said Zeebs never goes out. <laughs> this, that's a myth. That's a lie. That's yeah. a lie. He's a family I'm... man now, you know. Zeebs is a family man. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Correct. No, but you no. know, there's the spots we're going to down the river. The rooftop bars, the yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, we have we have been out. Like my wife and I, we, we actually have been out with uh, a couple of other partners and players. But there's that they have like boats where you can kind of go and have a drink. So when we first got over, the confinement was in the street, so it was okay. Before we kind of went in co- uh, into confinement, and uh, yeah, we got opportunity to go and have a, a drink and at the at this bar where you, it's called Shane Miller. Mm. And uh, and the Eiffel Tower is like literally right here, and the lights are going off every hour. It's great, it's awesome, mm. really cool experience. But I don't think that was a joint where Steve just kind of took it. He's going to take it. So there's a few more. Too. Yes, that'll be more, that'll be spending. <laughs> uh, Although Finn Finn's very good though. He's he's knowledge. He knows his way around Paris as well. He does very well. Yeah, any boy does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd like to just like it noted that I did not, I didn't just speak about Finn there. Somebody else brought yeah. him up. So <laughs> just want that for the record. Um, currently though, when you were in Wasps though, who would have been the wildest on a night out? Oh, wow. I'd put myself up there like before. I, I, I'd, I'd, give it, I'd give it a good crack. Um, Denny Cipriani. 
Willie LaRue. <laughs> is he good on a night out? Is he? Love, loves it. Really? Well, yeah. One, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, he's a South African, loves his beer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, great lad. Awesome, awesome bloke. Why don't we became really good mates uh, during our time there. Um, Elliot Daly gives it a good nudge as well. Nice one. Yeah, he, he, he feel the English boys. So, um, yeah, I think all rugby players are, are quite, um, you know, cuckoo when they have a few beers, I think. but Yeah, uh, yeah but no yeah. more than the Aussies. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> the Scottish, mate. <laughs> he's English. He's English. Don't he's a giant shark, man. <laughs> Um, I'm telling you, Nick Frisbee, did you ever come across pickles? Legend. They call oh. him the fish. Oh, my. They call him the wash, the fish. The fish. Fish. Oh, Why? Mate. He, because he, he is he's one of the... On the piss. Yeah, loves it. Yeah. One, of, one of the... Uh, no, that's not fish. Oh, that was Liam Gill. We, no, oh, yeah. He, they were best mates. Him and, yeah, best mates. Yeah. 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 Trev the Axe, they call him for some reason. <laughs> Trev the Axe. <laughs> But yeah, pickles. Oh man. Oh he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good fella. He's ridiculous. I've never seen a man. Oh, he, Teen Wolf. He's such a hairy man. He takes his top off. Teen Wolf. <laughs> yeah. Loves it. Yeah, you Aussies are bad, bad, bad influences. You what reckon? about um? What about Die Young? <laughs> I vote for KB. I vote for <laughs> ten out of ten. Hey, listen, Finn, Finn said to me. Uh, he mentioned you, and he was like, "Yeah, he's pretty loose, mate." And when Finn says someone's pretty loose. Yeah, they're going to be pretty nice. So, well, and he just disregards himself, does he? Yeah, he yeah, yeah. He's, like, he's like wearing the captain's hat, mate. You know? Exactly. Yeah. He's number one. <laughs> number one for a long time, actually. Oh, man. <laughs> and so, Critley, you played for the best school team in the country when you were only 15. So you were sort of a, a rugby school prodigy. But how did that pressure and hype then affect you growing up? Uh, yeah, uh, being exposed to the media and kind of feeling the kind of lev- uh, a certain expectation of myself you know as a young a young kid you, you kind of you 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 you're very confident in your own ability you don't really have that much uh fear because you just go out and just play off instinct and and you kind of enjoying it with your schoolmates and your school buddies and uh, until you kind of get your first opportunity at pro rugby with and for me it was with the waratahs and there was a lot of media there's a lot of criticism and, uh, you know, there's the times where it, I struggled with it, no doubt. Um, but uh, I think over the years, uh, I've kind of, you kind of learn how to deal with things. And, you know, when, when things get exposed, whether that's on the field or off the field, it can have a real kind of a, uh, influence to your mental uh, state. And there was times where I battled with that uh, throughout my career, but, um, you know, you, you, you learn, you learn from that stuff and, um, you know, and it, it, as a, as a, as a, when you kind of come into the league, you you you, you, you kind of accept that um, there's going to be you got to accept the respect responsibility, um, uh, certain responsibilities that you have as a pro rugby player. You know, a role model, um, you know, a person that represents sponsors and all the all the all the people that are involved in the game. So. Um, yeah, once you, you kind of, uh, once you, you accept it, then I think, uh, and it took me a while, but once you do, it, you kind of get on with it and just kind of let it flow a bit. So. And well, you've nearly played 100 times for Australia. So tell me, has Dave Rennie been in contact lately? You know, are you in his future plans? <laughs> uh, I hope so. <laughs> Hopefully, um, no contact as of yet. I did speak to him before I came over. Um, I think for me, it, it's more about making sure that I'm doing everything I can here in, in, in France, um, playing you know, consistent rugby, I think. Uh, hopefully that'll give me the best uh, opportunity to, to kind of go back and, and um, still continue to play international rugby. I think over here I've got uh, a, an advantage of playing against and with some of the best in the world. I think, uh, again, I'm still learning um, the, the players around me and I think that's going to give me the best uh, opportunity to be able to um, hopefully get a, a, a call up at some stage but um, for the moment it's important for me to kind of continue playing playing rugby here trying to play my best rugby um, week in week out and hopefully win some win, win, win the title and you know win some trophies and um, 
and really enjoy my experience here. And then we will we'll see, I think what my aim would be to, to play at the 2023 World Cup here in France. So it is a while away, um, but the desire is still there. As a rugby player, you, you always, well, I know I always kind of want to represent my country whilst I can. I think I've got the experience. So I know I can maybe influence the guys that, that, that uh, the, the next generation of players coming through uh, to help create a really good, healthy balance in a, in a, in a team. So just with the Wallabies, I think Dave's just concentrating on, on, the, on, the, on the talent at home mm. and making sure that there's pathways and there's development uh, programs for these, these guys to come through and, um, and get the best kind of uh, high performance um, training under them. Uh, and, and so they're also um, getting the experience and, and um, the, the, the hand-on kind of uh, training uh, which is really important in a, in a home nation uh, country, I think. Um, so for, for I know there's a lot of guys in Japan as well who I think are uh, also wanting to, to represent Australia at the next World Cup. So, you know, your Karevis, Foldies, um, mm. you know, there's a few other younger guys over there. Um, and uh, I think, uh, you know, once it, once it comes around, I'm, I'm sure, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to, we'll know a bit more. Yeah, um, and it's easier, like it's easier for you guys to integrate back into a side because you have all that experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not as easy to give those youngsters experience in between World Cups. So I, I yeah. actually kind of agree with it. You know, you don't need to play with them at the moment. You know, yeah. until the World Cup comes, World Cup year, you'll fit yeah. back into that system easy, bro. You'll be a shoe in. No, and Dave, yeah, only that that will be something up his sleeve. Like blood mm. all the youngsters, get them all out there, get them all yeah, playing yeah. as much as he can. Then when it gets to crunch time, start coming up to there right now, bringing the older heads to steady the ship a little bit and get, you know, I like he's a smart bloke. He's a bloody yep. good coach as well. And I could see yep. that's what he would be trying to do, eh? Mm. Okay, great. Yeah, that's good. Just so you know as well, this um this podcast is actually pretty influential for a player selection, and Ryan can attest to that. We have yeah. some very influential people stuck on, in. stuck on 49 caps for 18 months. <laughs> Christina puts a good word in on here, and I get I get my 50th. So oh, that's all that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, listen, I'll give him a ring for you. I'll give him a ring. A <laughs> good man, good man. <laughs> But well, Crately, I know that you're very vocal about the lack of Aboriginal presence in the Australian rugby team. So for our listeners who actually might not be aware of this, can you share with us how bad it actually is? Uh, it's, I think a lot of the Indigenous talent coming through, boys and girls, I think a lot of them grow up with the game of rugby league or AFL. So they're probably a two top sports uh, in Australia. And I think a lot of that talent is kind of nurtured and on better pathways in those sports. Um, a lot of the young young kids uh, who want to play rugby probably don't have the best pathways uh, to to kind of um, go into in rugby. There is one one pathway to the Lloyd McDermott program. Lloyd McDermott was a an ex Wallaby, um, who's now passed on, but his legacy is is it was to to create you know a pathway for these young Indigenous kids. Um, in the game of rugby to hopefully aspire to, to be a, a Wallaroo or a Wallaby one day. Um, and uh, I think, um, yeah, there, there's just, with Australian rugby, I think there, there, there needs to be more, more, more pathways, not just for Indigenous kids, but for all kids uh, who, want, who, want, who want to play our game. Um, and I think, you know, there, there's got to be, have, there's got to be some type of alignment there from top down to to the grassroots rugby to to help grow the game and I think that we are struggling a little bit back home with with those pathways and and, and the growth of the game and, and the numbers that are in the game um, but you know I th- hopefully when uh, if if they if they do sort that out um, we'll, we'll see be able, we'll be able to see more participants um, whether you're indigenous or non-indigenous to playing our game of rugby in Australia. 